Do you want to know how you can tell that 2020 is officially off the rails? No, it's not because we're all stuck inside during a pandemic, but rather the fact that we're only four months into this year and I've already reviewed two role-playing games based on Pong! I mean, when I talked about Hyper Galactic Psychic Table Tennis 3000 back in March, I figured that the concept was a novelty the likes we would probably never see again. And yet, here we are, just a few weeks later, and Atari drops Pong Quest on the world. I just as crazy as it sounds, this is another fantasy adventure game that sees a little paddle go on an epic quest to defeat a bunch of other paddles. It's fun and certainly charming, but, and I can't believe I'm about to ask this question, is it the best Pong RPG of 2020? That's what we're about to find out. This is the story of a kingdom in peril. Although he lives in a gorgeous palace, King Pong worries that his people are turning against him. They're all acting a little funny, and he thinks that it might have something to do with the spooky door. The problem is that in order to open the spooky door, he's gonna need to collect four orb-shaped keys. And that's where you come in. As a young, customizable paddle, it's your job to conquer the castle's four randomly generated dungeons in order to collect the orbs and see what's on the other side of the spooky door. In some ways, this is exactly what you think it is. We walk around the Zelda-inspired dungeons and get into one-on-one -on -one fights that are settled by playing a brief round of Pong. As you can tell, the scoreboard has been replaced by a health bar, but the basic concept remains the same. It's your job to hit the ball back and forth in an effort to slip one past the enemy paddle. Although both characters will lose a little bit of health with every hit, the trick is to do more damage by winning the point. If you can win the match, then you'll pick up the loot and come one step closer to finding the boss and collecting the key. Now, while Hypergalactic Psychic Table Tennis 3000 had you flinging magic all over the place, Pong Quest has a slightly different approach. Instead of unlocking new spells, you're essentially picking up single-use items that can be selected in battle. On top of getting the usual health potions and power boost, you'll also pick up items that'll make your ball temporarily invisible. Make it teleport across the table, plant little mushrooms, create a force field, drop oil slicks, generate ice, and so much more. There are more than 50 of these you can collect, but don't think that means that you can become a hoarder. It won't take more than a few minutes for you to realize that you can only hold a few of these items at once, so you won't always be able to go into battle with the equipment that you want. Now, I don't want to just gloss over the combat, because it really is exciting. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that I prefer the one-on-one -on -one action in this game over the other Pong RPG. The staggering amount of items helps to keep the combat fresh, and I like how each dungeon introduces a new set of attacks. For example, you'll find freezing items in the Ice Dungeon and sci-fi technology from the robots. It's also fun how the items can be turned around and used against you, especially in the later stages. On its own, the dungeon crawling is fun, if not short-lived. However, the best thing about this game is that you're able to throw the various items at your friends in the competitive modes. Best of all, you can fight each other online, something that was sorely missing from hypergalactic psychic table tennis. I also like that they added a version of the original arcade game, just in case you wanted to strip everything away and go classic. For as silly as this concept is, I'm impressed with all that has been packed into Pong Quest. On the other hand, there's no getting around how repetitive this game is. Part of the problem is that all the dungeons look and play out the same way, so there aren't really very many surprises. The game does try to shake things up by adding puzzles and minigames, but even those tend to wear out their welcome by the end of the game. It's also worth pointing out that the user interface could use some work. Cycling between the various items is frustrating in the middle of battle, especially when you're holding 10 different balls. I also wish that there was a button that you could press to unselect the item, which is just one of those things that would have effectively eliminated a lot of the needless cycling. 
And while I'm on the subject, the game needs to do a better job of describing the items in your inventory when our hero is exploring the dungeons. I mean, you can drop whatever you want, but there's nothing telling you what it is in the first place. Little oversights like this add up after a while. The combat may be fast and exciting, but the adventure itself feels a bit undercooked. Who knew that there would be this much material to mine out of the classic game Pong? Although it's a bit repetitive and isn't as ambitious as I would have liked, the developer has done an excellent job breathing new life into the 1972 arcade game. Between the fast pace and throwable items, the one-on-one -on -one combat is surprisingly exciting. Best of all, Pong Quest brings all the best elements from the campaign over to the competitive multiplayer mode, which even allows you to play online with friends. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but apparently 2020 is the year when I recommend not only one Pong-inspired role-playing game, but two! What a world! Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now here's the question I have for you. What classic game should come back as a role-playing game? Maybe this says something about me, but my mind immediately goes to a lot of those old-school Capcom arcade games. I'd love to see a Ghouls and Ghosts RPG, or maybe Strider, or Street Fighter, I, I don't know. There are just so many possibilities. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back tomorrow with a review of Ancient Enemy. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.